All right, hello and welcome back to Ashback Cats. Let's play that. Now, I was playing Chicken Run a while ago, and I realized it reminded me of this one Game Boy Color puzzler game. And that puzzle game is Little Magic. Now, knowing that was a little bit difficult. Oh, can you move left to right? No, <laughs> that arrow is an icon. Now, ooh, all right. Now, what's unfortunate about this game is I tried to, like, look it up. I was like, hmm, I wonder what that's called. Let's look at a uh, list of puzzle games for the Game Boy Color. And, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find it. And I kept searching, and I kept searching, and I looked for, like, through my collection, let's say. And, uh, I couldn't find it. And I don't know why. And I was, like, thinking, I'm thinking. And it's like, why, why uh, you search for Sokoban Game Boy Color and you can't find it? And then I realized it's because it's a game in Japanese. But how did I find it, you might ask? Well, there is this wonderful site called romhacking.net that has translations of Japanese games. Oh, I see. So this level is meant to introduce the gimmick that if you press B, you can push the heart. Uh, I mean, while I will say that I definitely enjoyed this in the past, uh, oh, interesting. Well, I definitely enjoyed this in the past. Um, uh, let's see. That's a restart. Oh, okay. So if you just press select, then you uh, restart the game. Uh, there's probably... Yeah, you can probably pull it or something. Okay, that's a restart. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I tried finding this game. Okay, romhacking.net. That is a wonderful site that has translations of various games. And so I must have found the translation for this one day and then started playing it and was like, this is actually a pretty legit cool game. And so I uh, kept playing it. And then, uh... Oh, that's what this is. Okay, you can make bubbles. So it's not just a straight Sokoban game. Uh, you can make bubbles, and then you can actually move the heart using those bubbles. And I mean, honestly, with, with these little sorts of Game Boy Color puzzle games, like, it's sort of like simple premise, and then just kind of executed well. And, uh, let's see, you just gotta... Oh, interesting. Okay, how do you... Oh, I see. It, it pops when it pops. Okay. Sure. I don't know. I, I oh, And also, too, I was watching myself play Yam Yam on uh, the old Let's Play No Name Aim game. And then I kind of got a little bit nostalgic for uh, these Sokoban games. Because, I mean, Sokoban is like... I see. The heart can probably only go one direction or something. <laughs> One Direction. But uh, I just got kind of nostalgic for these sorts of Sokoban games, because, I mean, it's it's an incredibly easy game concept, but then uh, you have to kind of really think a little. So, yeah, just in case you're uh, unsure of what to do, this ain't no, this ain't your papa's Sokoban game. This is no old Sokoban game. Man. Yeah, no, I just remember just blazing right through all these things. And then also, too, there's a cute little anime witch, and there's some conceit of, like, I don't know, she's she's trying to do her witchy best, trying to become some sort of fully-fredged adult. Because, I mean, again, she's starting off as an apprentice. You work your way up to a disciple and the master. And uh, it's just got everything I want in a game. It's got a cute, fun little theme. That was a poor choice. It, uh... That, was, that wasn't even poor her choice. It's got, like, clear, very easily articulatable gameplay, and something that should not be neglected for uh, Game Boy games like this, it has a save feature. Now, you might remember from uh, the Chicken Little or Chicken Run game that we played, like, it was giving us passwords all the time. And if you play, like, Cat Trap or any of the other puzzle games, maybe even Tokitori, although I'm pretty sure Tokitori, being a Game Boy Color game, had a save. And so, you'd have to enter in a password. And it's like, yeah, passwords are okay, and you can, like, share them with your friends, I guess, but, like, I really just want to pop the game open and just play it over and over and over and over and over. Oh, man, speaking of a Game Boy puzzle game that I just played over and over and over, have you ever heard of Guru Logic Champ? For, uh, granted, it's for the Game Boy Advance. I mean, that's a little bit in the future compared to this game. 
But man, oh man, does that game, it, it's got like a thousand puzzles, and it just, there's just something about it. Well, mostly the fact that it's got like a thousand puzzles. And so it just keeps on going and going and going, and the puzzles get harder and harder and harder, and you just keep playing and playing and playing. Man, there was a time in my life when I would just like play one of those games every day. Uh, just a game of Guru Logic Champs. That's how I woke up in the morning. It's like, new day, new level of Guru Logic Champ. And then I'd beat it and I'd be like, dang, this could be a good day. Or, or I couldn't beat it. And it's like, this, this day's already shaping up to be terrible. Actually, I think that was... What a heartbreaker. Oh, and there is a life system. Although, in a game like this, lives are almost completely abstracted. And again, like, the game doesn't even, like, pretend like lives really matter. It's like, continue, and then you continue, and it's like, okay, fine. And then you just, uh, continue. Just in case you were wondering what those, uh, mines did. Well, those are, in fact, mines. They're not, like, I don't know, spiky friends or something. This isn't Kirby. This is, uh, Sokoban. Next level Sokoban. So, like, let's say you're tired of Sokoban, you're like, yeah, I get it, I can push the block, there's only so many things you can do with this con concept, and that's true. But what you can do next is add a new mechanic. And I mean, again, she only has, like, what, two actions? But there's just so many ways that everything kind of combines, and everything starts coming together. Uh, let's see, now we got to outwit the snake. Oh, okay, <laughs> grass slows you down, good to know, good to know. Oh, that's right, you're not even getting passwords as a viewer. So, uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, replicate the progress, you're gonna have to go through and fight, fight through the game yourself. Now, granted, that's not such a tall order, and especially, too, because I'm probably showing you how to beat it more than not, but... Alright, let's see. So, I'm not sure if you've noticed by now, but, uh, whenever there's a formation like this, then you have to set up a bubble, and then you have to race back to the heart. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I thought the timing was a little bit tighter than that, but not so much. Okay. Okay. That, that snake, though, he's got my number. He's gunning for me. Okay, this, this is the first level where things get a little bit janky. So, the deal is you can pop your balloons and you can move them over. And then so what you can do is just make like a huge long chain of balloons. No, there's something like... Yeah, okay, so the balloons do a different thing. So we want a fat one, then a medium one, and then... Okay, there we go. And so you just have to know how uh, that all works, how to change up your balloons. There's some other puzzle game that I was thinking of for the Game Boy Color or something. Oh, well also, around the time I was uh, playing Guru Logic Champ, I was also playing Rhythm Heaven. And that's an excellent game for just kind of picking up and playing, like playing through one stage a day sort of deal. That was a mistake. Oh, that accomplishes nothing. I see, you have to move the heart over the water. Got it. Alright, so let's uh, give this level another go. Okay, so this game is a little bit tricky. So, okay, there we go. Shove that. Well, the game wants us to have enough foresight to have gone there and set up a bomb already. Well, I mean, then again, like, sort of the joy of playing these sorts of puzzle games is that you kind of slowly play through each level and you kind of work through it bit by bit. And you kind of, like, figure out what it is you need to do. And actually, one of the more fun parts about Tokutori was kind of, like, just looking through ahead of time and seeing if you can get anywhere uh, sort of doing stuff. Let's see. So that's gonna plug up there. Interesting. Well, okay, so we set an explosion here that'll move the heart up here, but then we need to move it up here. 
And then here, but we can set up a bomb there, and then move it down. Well, that is the plan at any rate. So, we need to set up an explosion here. Well, hmm. Jeez. Actually, if you're, if you're uh, really into schoolgirls, like, fighting through weird, odd mazes, trying to uh, get to the end, heck, if you like even RPGs, uh, you might want to check out the Madu Monogatari series. Um, if you've ever played Puyo Puyo, and you never kind of like marveled at the story, it's like, how could these crazy people have come up with this, this uh, frankly absurd story? Starring, like, some sort of schoolgirl as she, as she, uh, just kind of tries to, uh, fight off all these weird people in her path. Well, the story for Puyo Puyo didn't actually come directly from Puyo Puyo. It actually came from Madu Monogatari beforehand. So, I don't know if, for some reason, schoolgirls trying to, uh, earn their ways into the world at large. That's a reset. Uh, tickles your fancy, then yeah, Madu Monogatari. Let's see here. So, slip. Not a problem. Okay. Aha, you're tricky. Um. So, obviously, the heart goes here. Yeah. I mean, that is just the fun of all this. It's like you've got to work it out bit by bit. Yeah, see? I mean, there's nothing the game won't throw at you that, like, it may not mess with you a little bit, but... Oh, yeah. So on the uh, main screen, there's a free mode, which lets you just play any, any puzzle you want. Now, I'm assuming that, like, it won't tell you any sort of cutscenes. Now, I think there's only 15 stages in Apprentice. So, we might be able to make it through that, and then we can see the next brand of cutscene. Because I do remember, like, I was playing this game, and I made it to the next cutscene thing, and that was a happy day, because these, these cutscenes are kind of nice and cheerful and charming. Wow, it, it, it feels like she should slide straight into those spikes. But, uh, she does not. Interesting. I'm noticing a twist here. Oh, right. If only I had some sort of method of indirectly moving something. Perhaps some sort of explode. Yeah. Alright, let's, uh, you know what? I'm kind of out of things to say, but I want to show you this game, at least until the next cutscene. So let's just fast forward through. Let's just fast forward through. Oh. So, uh, one subtle interesting limitation is the Switch cannot change directions on a dime. I mean, you can in real life, but can you make explosive bubbles? You gotta trade everyday skill for genius sometimes. But anyway, she can't, um, just change her facing, so that actually becomes part of the puzzle. It's like, how do you manipulate her movement so that she's actually facing the right direction? And I mean... Honestly, as unrealistic though it may be, it does add an extra layer to this whole puzzle experience. And so really, if you think about it, you only have three aspects. You've got your facing, you, you can shove, and you can make balloons, and you push. I guess that kind of goes with shove. But it's like those three elements, and they're very simple, intuitive to understand elements. I mean, you could probably teach a kid how to play this game. But then you put them together in just so many strange and subtle ways. That is the genius of this game. And the genius of a puzzle game, a good puzzle game in general. Okay, so the arrows do work like how I expected them to. You can only move one way through them. That makes this a little bit subtle. Okay, this is gonna take a while to think.
Hold on, let's talk about Hila. Hila, 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 All right, so I was talking about how you uh, manipulate her movement. And, uh, well, as you can see, that's actually kind of important because now it's like, well, I can't, uh, set the pop I can't set the bubble. Uh, pretty much, you have to come in from below, and then you can actually make that bubble there. It's, it's very subtle, but it definitely adds, like, you, you need to think ahead. You absolutely need to think ahead in this sort of game. But, I mean, the game gives you all the tools you need, like, you press start, you can zip around the screen. Oh, wow. That's actually way faster than I thought it would be. So, I mean, it totally allows for a uh, careful foresight and, like, thinking ahead and planning it all out. one looks like a doozy. Alright, let's look ahead so it's not like we're just fumbling around blindly. <laughs> oh my gosh, they double gotcha. So you gotta plan ahead, place a balloon here, and then place a balloon here, and then rush to the maze. The, these guys, they really like their thinking. Oh, just too slow. It occurs to me that I only need to have the balloon here, and that everywhere else you can kind of maneuver around it. So that's helpful. With nary a moment to spare. It's only level 15 for that cutscene, but man, oh man, do you have to work for it. And these puzzles got, uh, well, I mean, once they gave us all the controls, then these puzzles got, uh, pretty tough. Pretty darn tough. that is kind of especially refreshing about this game is that it does actually allow for, like so it's an action puzzle platformer or whatever but like that action part is critical because the whole thing I'm having trouble with is how do I set this charge because if I could completely control the charge I could set one here I could set one up above the witch and then oh but I wouldn't because then I'd be on the water no that would be doable and I'd be able to set a charge here, and things would be all hunky-dory. But I'm beginning to suspect that no, they will not be. Now, okay, so she can move here. She can set a charge here, no problem. But if she walks back up, then she is, like, completely sunk. Oh man, now I'm even starting to become so frustrated, I can't even do the beginning part of the level. Now, do you understand why I recommend only playing one puzzle a day? Jeez Louise. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Oh, crap. Okay, I think I might have been obsessing about this over nothing. Okay, easy enough. See, that was, that was an easy puzzle. Easy puzzle. Let's go, cutscene time. Oh, ain't that just heartbreaking. Okay, I... I think I've reached my limit. Oh, and she's four more lives, so it'll be ever so longer until we reach the, uh, next cutscene. Oh, well. Well, so that was little magic. Uh, let's see. So you can load... Okay, so it does save your data, so no need for any passwords. There is a free, like I was saying. So we can do Apprentice, and let's see how many levels there are. Oh, see? Only 20 levels. But I mean, then they start getting pretty tough, so... That's... That's a no-go. But yeah, that's a little magic. So, I mean, it's it's this little action puzzle platformer that you never would have heard of otherwise. But man, oh man, does it do a lot of things right. Like, I really wish more people knew about this. Because you think about Game Boy Advance puzzle games, and it's... It's, it's not a whole lot there. But then you look at this, and you're like, this is a whole new world of puzzle games. It even has an intro sequence. Like, what Game Boy game has an intro sequence? Now, granted, they're doing this with the foresight of, um, I don't know, living in the 1990s. And, uh, Game Boy Color games in the 90s are, like, way more refined than Game Boy Color games in the past, but still. This is... This is quite the game. And, I mean, the visuals, like... They did just about all they could with this. Little magic. And hey, if you don't check it out, at least I made a video so like I'll never forget again. But I remembered what it was, and I remembered how hard it can be at times. So on that note, this cat's gotta scat.